Welcome. Madhav, ready? Good afternoon, Principal Sir, Aoti Ma'am, and Deepak Sir, Media Club, and to all the students who have joined us on YouTube. This is the sixth in the room. is online literacy topics of communication skills. Today we have come with a very unique topic, which is very famous so far as competitive examinations is concerned. It is common errors. So, I was having a sir in my mind. Because for the very first time on line on screen, I would be addressing him as sir. He has been my student from first uh, first year, and uh, very 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 intelligent, bright student turned into. Uh, Principal, sir. Karuthi, unmute. I think it's now audible. Dr. Sivasto, it is audible. It's audible. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, uh, welcome to Dr. Deepak Bhatt for very uh, on a very important not topic, common errors while writing. I think that's a very. I think we all commit some mistake while writing in a proper uh, English. But uh, I think uh, we are lagging the proper information, or uh, we are not that much sincere uh, enough to correct our mistake. So probably uh, with this particular topic, many of the doubts of the students, while well, they are commonly writing any English sentence, I think they will try to be correct. So this is very very important topic. So thank you, Dr. Deepak, Bhatt, for spending your valuable time, and all my dear students who are joined to. And uh, special thanks to Dr. Srivastava for arranging uh, this particular talk. He is uh, roping up all the good teachers of all GECs. So really, he is doing a commendable work for the students community of all colleges because it's open to all. It's not limited to GEC Bhavnagar. All students, any students, any faculty can join and take the maximum benefit of the things which we are highly needed. So really happy to be the part of this and. Uh, a uh, little bit late because of one important meeting regarding syllabus was going on in the university, so I could not connect at the right time. But anyway, uh, now uh, without wasting much time, you may start, uh, and we can start this web series uh, six uh, in row. Once again, thanks to Dr. Deepak Bhatt on behalf of GEC Bhavnagar, all faculty members, uh, specifically Dr. Sivastav, Aoti Madam, and all the media club persons who are present over here to be the to have a, this successful web series. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your kind words and uh, for uh, inviting me for the session. Thank you so much, sir. Aoti, ma'am. Yes, uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, audible. Hello. Okay. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Uh, warm welcome to you, Deepak Bhatt, sir, in our webinar series. And Thank you, uh, really, uh, you have picked up or either you are assigned very very uh, uh, useful topics for our students also and uh, even we know that common grammar errors but sometimes these errors become so common that it becomes uh, difficult for the students also to identify them and they act
classification uh, errors and uh, especially errors need to be focused upon compared to the mistakes that we may do out of the shortage of time or some lapse or so so again not taking more time sir uh, wish you all the very best for this session thank you thank you ma'am deepak sir start okay uh, first of all uh, thanks a lot uh, to gc bhavnagar uh, uh, first of all to badodariya sir and uh, also to himanshu sir ahuti madam uh, for organizing such a nice series of lectures you know which are very helpful to the students and as i just uh, came to know that it's not just limited to gc bhavnagar students but to everybody so this is really a big plat i think and uh, this makes a lot of sense so thank you very much again for inviting me for this session so uh, coming back to the topic uh, like uh, let me start directly uh, with the topic which is common errors in writing so basically uh, this is a very wide and well known topic which you know uh, like a lot of people have uh, you know the difficulties with or rather let's say that you know uh, nowadays in so many competitive exams you will find out that you know grammar english grammar basically is one of the important portions which is you know asked uh, and that is also the reason why this topic is so much popular among the you know paper setters and all of them so uh, today what i expect uh, to do is i will just practically uh, you know present some of the sentences in front of you as well as i will also just go to the theory portion of that you know because any uh, any kind of a practical it has its basis in the theory so unless you know the rules you are supposed uh, you are not supposed to you know find out what is wrong in the sentence or what i should you know learn from the sentence that is the reason why i have divided my presentation into two parts so coming back now with the so I'll, it will take a uh, two minutes to just uh, start with that so just a moment yeah so uh, starting with our presentation as i just said that common errors in writing are certain things that we are supposed to learn you know as part of the syllabus also and even otherwise also so like uh, there are many kinds of errors that we make uh, you know while uh, using in english like they may be related to articles they may be related to prepositions and they may be related to modal auxiliaries and many such things you know so uh, these errors are generally the ones which we are sometimes uh, you know we make it unconsciously and sometimes uh, because we have misunderstood the rules that is also one of the reasons why it happens you know while uh, surfing on the net i just came to uh, know uh, you know certain interesting things like this word empty you know so this is a very interesting word in fact why i have chosen this word just to make you understand that you know this is a very nice word in which if you remove the letter e that is in the beginning still it will be pronounced as empty you know if you remove y it can also be pronounced as empty and if you also remove the between part that is p again it will be also pronounced as empty so see this is something that is very interesting with language that you need to find out certain things which can be omitted certain things which can be remain as they are right interesting sentence which reads like i like cooking my family and my pets mind well that i have not used comma anywhere and this is the uh, example of using comma right so this is generally the error that many of us make and we don't know what are the horrible effects of this like for example i like cooking my friends and my pets so you are almost saying that you are cooking the family and pets is it really possible right so just look at the sentence when you speak it and when you read it you must feel the comma you must put the comma so i like cooking then there is a comma then my family there is a comma and my pets so this is how you know the whole thing goes on but these are very small things you know 
that's the beauty of that because these are very small things that we do not even uh, you know look at and sometimes it makes a lot of horrible effects on you know the readers and even the writers you know it is said that a great writer doesn't write the first para of his book just you know uh, by opening his eyes from his bed he requires a lot of things to rehearse he requires a lot of things to rewrite and redraft and so many things are there and then only you come out with the best of the writing right so remember that common errors in writing are those errors which will be very very small but you require that i mean you are required to have a very very keen insight and then only you can learn this kind of techniques okay so now the question is like what happens why we still are making those kinds of errors remember that making that or achieving the good marks or uh, getting good scores in exam like many of you might have done that in your school days is not the proof that you are good in english or you are good in your listening speaking reading and writing so don't misunderstand the same thing because you know many uh, many many students you know just by filling the blanks or by preparing some synonyms and antonyms and some uh, tenses verb forms and all of that they think that okay my english is good and they manage to you know go with english but that's not the way in which you should learn it okay so just put your marks aside because you may have very good score on your mark sheet but at the same time you may not have that good command on your language so always remember that your marks are not the testimony of your skills and i hope that many of you who aspire to go abroad and you you know you need to appear for ielts and toefl and many such exams you are required this kind of english okay so that is the reason why these kinds of common errors you need to learn and you need to find out right the another question is like see parallelly i'll be also giving you some solutions like how to improve you know so while you know that's a basic question like uh, why we we are not able to come up with those perfect words or perfect sentences that is because we are lagging in the practice okay we need to practice a lot and that's how we can learn them right so if you don't practice then naturally you are not going to you know uh, learn the correct things or the new things like i i give you an example uh, there is a, you can say a sentence uh, in english i want to lay down or i want to lie down now this is these are the two sentences basically okay i want to lay down or i want to lie down now you will be very much surprised to know that you know many people they have this kind of an idea in their mind that the correct sentence is i want to lay down why because you know the verb forms are very much important people do not understand or do not remember the verb forms and if they don't understand the verb forms naturally they are going to make mistakes so see there are two kinds of verb forms one is that transitive another is intransitive so for example there is a verb form called lie l i e and the past form is lay and the past participle is lain and the same way there is another verb which is uh, lie and the other form or the past form is um, sorry lay is the other word uh, verb then lay is the past participle and past form is also the same so when you do not understand these two words then definitely you are going to commit the mistake like for example l a y lay that means to put something down and l i e lie that means to lie on a surface okay or to sleep on some uh, some you know sofa or something like that so you can say that lie down is the correct sentence but you will hear so many people saying that i want to lay down now this you know a british teacher uh, he conducted a survey and he asked the native speakers like tell me what is the correct sentence i want to lay down or i want to lie down so majority of the people said i want to lay down and that's the incorrect sentence right so remember to memorize the verb forms is very very important when you are learning english and when you want to avoid the errors in your writing okay uh, another example we can take and that is uh, you know there are two words in english uh, like less and fewer so less is a word and other is fewer so less is used for you know the uh, things which we cannot count and fewer
we use for those uh, you know which we can count so things which we can count like for example fewer cars fewer bungalows fewer books like that and if you use the word less that means you are using less uh, money less time okay uh, or like that so many people make mistakes even you will find out these kinds of things even into you know the mega malls or uh, you must have seen it somewhere like there is a sentence there were fewer people in the party or there were less people in the party so definitely you need to judge what is right again majority of the native speakers you know whose mother tongue is english even they make the mistakes in this sentence by saying that there were less people in the party right so again see that less is a word which uh, is not to be used there is a yes, word sir. called fewer yes sir uh, are you changing the slide or uh... no no sir i'm just presenting oh. from my okay okay. Okay, okay okay that's it that's it okay okay yes, okay sir. okay sir. so less and fewer are the two words which we are supposed to learn and uh, just look at the difference you know countable and non countable things still and uh, i think even in a mall i read one sentence which was written 10 items or less you know there is a different queue at the last in every mall like if you go to dmart or big bazaar or somewhere you'll find out that you know there is a different queue for those people like those who have less than 10 items then there is a board which says less items as i mean 10 items or less so this is grammatically or rather you can say it is having an error which means you should speak 10 items or fewer right so see this is what we are supposed to understand and that is why the introductory part i have given you enough of examples to show what are the kinds of errors that generally we commit even in our writing even in our speaking and see grammar itself okay what is first grammar you know many people are afraid of grammar okay our tense is verb forms articles prepositions many other things that modal auxiliary so much of confusion you know but do not you know confuse yourself like this always the grammar is simply to clear the meanings once you can clear the meanings you can definitely you know uh, be a good speaker or a good writer the same way whatever you write it should have the readability you know what your writing it should be readable that means it should have proper grammar choice of words and things like that and readability like your thoughts they should be well arranged it should make some sense you know there is a very famous uh, quote from uh, chomsky a linguist who said colorless green ideas sleep beautifully now get the sentence colorless green how can this green with the colorless the ideas sleep have you ever heard of ideas walking sleeping reading writing no and the same way beautifully you say that the whole thing is done beautifully but how how is it possible so remember that whatever is written in grammar or something that we re, uh, that we uh, you know write with correct grammar but making no sense is not english so that's why here there is a sentence let's eat grandma now this is a sentence without a comma as i just said another sentence in the beginning the same way this is an example now let's eat grandma so there is a different tone you put a comma and you are calling your grandma for the dinner or you are calling your grandma for the lunch right but when you say let's eat grandma that means uh, you are going to eat grandma you know that is the meaning that you are conveying by this sentence <laughs> this looks very ridiculous and horrible as well right so always remember that grammar is something that we are supposed to take a lot of care and especially we coming error the common errors now here i have taken you know as a prima facie i want to just discuss these ten sentences how in the singular and plural uh, many times we commit you know the small mistakes now you know that subject verb and predicate in any sentence it should have these parts and if you clearly read the sentence then you will i mean it should make the sense that's the only thing which we are supposed to uh, find out in a sentence so look at the first sentence the color of the walls 
and you're given two verbs is and are really beautiful so the color of the walls is beautiful is really beautiful or the color of the walls are really beautiful so it depends on the subject you look at the subject you have the subject the color color itself is a singular subject so you need to use it as is the color of the walls is now in the second sentence you can see the colors of the wall now you can understand the difference what will come the colors of the wall are really beautiful because now your subject is plural the colors and third sentence which is a uh, quite i mean it is a little different which says the colors of the walls are really beautiful why are will come here because it has all the subject items as plural you got this so these are the three sentences see uh, students if you have any doubts please note them down parallelly i think i'm uh, trying to explain you as easy as possible but you may have questions at your end so if you want to ask any questions at the end you can definitely ask okay now this question num uh, i mean the sentence number 4 look at that his expertise of using difficult words and idioms madhu appeal to or appeals to right sir excuse me madhu yes sir ये बार बार आ जा क्यों रहा है स्क्रीन पे वाइज इट ब्लिंकिंग कि बार बार ब्लिंक हो रहा है तो मैंने कहा लाओ पूछ लू सर 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 को बोलो स्लाइड शो बंद करें सर स्लाइड शो बंद कर दीजिए बार बार ब्लिंक हो रहा है वो ओके बट सर इफ आई जस्ट स्विच ऑफ द स्लाइड सो देन प्रोबेबली इट विल नॉट शो आई थिंक अभी अभी स्क्रीन दिखाई दे रहा है नहीं 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 सर स्क्रीन शेयर कीजिए ना तरह एफ फाइव मत दबाइए शेयर स्क्रीन करिए ओके ओके जस्ट वन सेकेंड सर अभी सर दिखाई दे रहा है इसका स्क्रीन हाँ अभी है ना सर साइड का जो विंडो है ना आपके हाँ उसको मिनिमाइज मतलब वो ड्रैग कर दीजिए ताकि वो छोटे हो जाए ताकि ये इसको ज्यादा स्पेस मिले जो लेफ्ट लेफ्ट बार से ना हाँ लेफ्ट लेफ्ट ओके उसको हाँ उसको उसको छोटा कर दीजिए ओके ओके हाँ चलेगा बस ठीक अभी आप नेक्स्ट में करेंगे तो हो जाएगा हाँ सर ओके प्लीज सो दिस इज द फोर्थ सेंटेंस वी वर डिस्कसिंग नाउ लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट यू नो His expertise of using difficult words and idioms. Uh, see, ये जो sentence है, इसका subject बहुत lengthy है. That means many times what happens? People look at the whole subject, you know. I mean the whole uh, subject, and then they decide whether वहाँ पे appeal आना चाहिए या फिर appeals आना चाहिए. So remember, your basic subject is his expertise. not of using difficult words and idioms that is the extra part of the subject but the main subject is his expertise so when you have the subject his expertise naturally the answer is appeals to and not appeal to right this is the main thing which you should remember okay now see sentence number 5 it says there was or there were now see both the answers are possible but look at the uh, second part of the sentence which says there dash several officers in the meeting now several officers itself that is plural so naturally you should use were and not was otherwise both were possible right look at sentence number 6 the person now person itself is a singular subject so definitely you will use was talking to the old lady right if there was a subject like the persons right and definitely it is wrong in that sense right you should say persons or even that will not suit to the sentence okay now number 7 the sound of bells from the temples now is or are now look at the subject again just like in example number 4 you have the same thing in example number 7 you are talking about sound and not bells or even the temples so your answer is a singular verb that is is an enchanted scene from the villages now number 8 sentence talks about each of the students 
ना सी ये टाइप के जो सेंटेंसेस होते हैं वो मेजोरिटी कंफ्यूज करते हैं और ये कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स में इसी टाइप के सेंटेंसेस आपको देंगे जिसमें आपको सब्जेक्ट प्लूरल लगेगा जैसे यहाँ पे है स्टूडेंट्स बट एग्जैक्टली वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टूडेंट्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ईच ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स सो ईच बेसिकली मीन्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एन इंडिविजुअल सो ईच ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स हैज अ टेक्सट बुक राइट नंबर नाइन आइदर मोनेश और हिज ब्रदर जिनेश नाउ आइदर और इज ऑल्सो अगेन अबाउट सिंगुलर subject not about plural subjects remember that okay so either ponesh or his brother jinesh works on this machine and number 10 the trouble with these children okay so again in this sentence we are not talking about these children but we are talking about trouble and trouble is a singular subject so you are going to use is their attitude remember i i i remember another thing is the same sentence which is you know i have seen many people saying children's as a plural of children see it's it's incorrect child is a singular uh, word and the plural of that is children the same way there is a word called data which is plural remember many people say datas or datas it's wrong datum is a singular word and the plural of that is called uh, i mean datum is a singular data or data is a plural word right so remember these are the common errors that you know generally we uh, we, we we commit in our writing or even in our speaking now the next one which um, we are going to discuss now see as i earlier informed that you know uh, many competitive exams nowadays they have english as one of the compulsory subjects so uh, if we talk about our gpsc that is gujarat public service commission exam uh, here on the screen i have the syllabus of uh, gpsc mains exam in that you can see the middle portion that is of english subject english in which you get letter writing essay writing report writing and also there is a component called english grammar and you get the mcq type of questions as far as this part is concerned so uh, for your better understanding i have taken you know some samples of gpsc deputy section officers exam you know i have taken a few questions from uh, the uh, you know the uh, question paper that was available on internet and i wanted to just explain you like what kind of questions do they ask in these kinds of exams you know so look at the question number 1 seema mailed her application for a new job now they, you are given four options you know so you are not Uh, told anything whether this is uh, an active sentence and then uh, turn it into a passive or rather this is direct speech and turn it into indirect speech this is a simple sentence and turn it into you know a question sentence nothing like that you are just said do as directed okay so look at this first sentence so seema mailed her application for a new job so there are four options the application for a new job had been mailed by seema the application for a new job has been mailed by seema the application for her new job has been mailed by seema and the application for a new job was mailed by seema now see by this you must have understood that when there is a sentence which uh, you know has the uh, preposition by that means you are talking about the passive voice so this above sentence was in active voice and now you need to do the passive voice See, look at the sentence and decide its uh, tense. So, Seema mailed. This is the past tense because M A I L is a verb, and then you have turned it into a past tense. So, when you do the passive voice, you should keep the same tense. But passive voice of simple past is done with was or were, and then the third form of the verb. So, if you look at all the sentences. see exactly simple present tense when you having passive voice remember to do the passive with is am are and third form of the verb the same way simple past tense so past form of the verb you just change it into was were and then third form of the verb and the same way simple future tense so will shall and the main form of the verb and when you turn it into passive you do it will shall then uh, be and then third form of the verb 
right so this is how you just remember everything into some correlation you know then you will be better able to understand see the second sentence second is a different kind of sentence which uh, you will find out and it was, that was asked in this uh, deputy section officers exam so have the car stolen so this is an exclamatory sentence you can see at the end there is exclamation mark okay so there are four answers over here steal the car that's a sentence then you have you should have the car the stolen car then the third is get someone to steal the car and the fourth one is they have stolen the car now you will have the question like how to select the answer so remember get make and have these are the three words which in grammar we are supposed to remember specially because when you want to get something done that means there is some request when you want to have something done that means uh, you you do it by uh, some force and then you have make which means you pay something you pay the money and then your work is done so here have the car stolen that means you can see the sentence which starts with get is your correct answer so there may be have there may be you know a make so here get is the uh, is the uh, correct answer i mean the sentence uh, has the correct answer that is c and the answer is get someone to steal the car right so these three verbs you should remember specially right third uh, question uh, i mean uh, question i'm skip, uh, skipping because it's similar to the first one okay now look at the uh, next uh, kind of questions which are there uh, i had to stop all my work to complete this project now you look at this sentence you know you will say that uh, this is a kind of uh, present perfect tense but no it's not present perfect you look at it i had and then you have the verb to stop so here it's a it's a question which is related to the infinitive you can say that there is a there is a preposition to which is used before the verb which is stop so here whenever you look at this kind of sentence you have to do the passive voice as to plus main verb is in your question like for example i had to stop so when you change it into passive remember i had i had to stop let us first read the sentence i had to stop all my work to complete this project now look at the answers first all other work had to be stopped by uh, had to be stopped to complete this project by me right another is for completing this project remember you cannot change the sentence altogether so your answer number b and i mean answer b and c these are automatically incorrect because for completing this kind of thing you cannot do in passive voice don't change the construction of this sentence you know like you make complete into completing this kind of thing you cannot do in passive voice right and look at the option d to complete this project all other work had been stopped by me but as i told you earlier that the sentence in question number 4 is not present a uh, past perfect tense and that is why your answer will be a because you look at the option that is had to be stopped okay so what you should learn in this sentence to plus main verb can be converted into to plus b plus past past participle yes sir okay just a minute i will present it again is it visible now no sir okay now no madam what's the issue fine
just a second i'm trying students you might be going uh, through the lecture what sir is teaching you that he has tried to cover all the competitive examinations which i was actually uh, actually i demanded this from uh, sir that try to concentrate your uh, lecture basically keeping in mind the competitive examinations that basically gujarat uh, has so so which help us to clear those examinations this is not for a particular we are talking about it's for the basic examination that anybody has to go if he or she is appearing for the examination and wishes to crack and join a particular position english happens to be the basic thing that everybody should know and see this deputy section or section officer or gps examination that sir has come up with yes sir it's visible and you can go on okay sir okay so please you know this this type of lectures if you don't know let me tell you there is a culture which is now establishing into gujarat where you will have to pay hefty money to cry to go for coaching and all this for these things only so this is coming to your doorstep at no cost just a, a teacher uh, uh, who has dedicated most of his life to english language and literature has come up prepared a ppt specially for you so please students make the maximum use of it any doubt ask in the comment box i will ask on your behalf sir please yes sir yes thank you i i agree absolutely with himansh sir uh, because i have been also a witness of many of my previous students who you know uh, happen to join the coaching classes and then they tell me that sir they, uh, to teach this uh, all kinds of things like grammar stuff and everything they are charging something like 15000 for you know one session which will go around 2 to 3 months or not more than that even right so i hope students you will make the most out of this session and you will get the benefit hello yes sir yes sir ppt is visible now yes sir gpsc deputy section office other screen is that yes right yes now. okay okay sir thank you thank you okay so now uh, going ahead so as we discussed here we have the active passive voice types of sentences we have this you know uh, imperative type of sentences we have exclamatory type of sentences now we go to a different kind of variety you know which will definitely uh, be one of the common errors we can say right so look at these sentences which i have uh, shown here see the first sentence in which there is an error and we need to find out how these errors you know they can be uh, identified and how they can be removed also so look at this first sentence i suggested him to buy the other one this is one of the sentence uh, i mean one of the sentences right now this sentence is grammatically wrong why i tell you because you have the sentence written like i suggested him never ever use the uh, pronoun just immediately after your verb okay because i suggested him that means you suggested that to somebody i mean you suggested that person to somebody right so that is the thing which is incorrect in this particular sentence right so remember that i suggested him is a wrong and uh, option and you should write like i suggested that he buy the other one or the other way of saying the sentence is i suggested buying the other one okay so what is the rule that you learn here do not immediately put any pronoun just after your verb that is suggest okay so always say i suggested that he go to the mall i suggested that he come with me now you will have another question why to put uh, you know the um, the verb that is as by and not buys so remember that you are changing the sentence you know i mean you are using the verb that and you are making it almost as an imperative type of a sentence so remember that i suggested that it is a kind of suggestive 
you know a sentence so i suggested that he buy the other one or the other way of saying is i suggested buying the other one now sentence number 2 i suggested you to do it now this is one sentence again the same thing i suggested that don't omit that in the sentence and then you can write as you do it or i suggest it to you the same way like the first sentence you can say i suggested doing it so that is also the correct answer number 3 sentence i suggest you don't be late anymore now this is commonly you know said by people i suggest you don't be late now this sentence doesn't make direct any kind of a sense so what is the better sentence to that i suggest you not to be late anymore okay i suggest you not to be late anymore or you can say that i suggest you not being late right then this is a very popular kind of a mistake that people make i have a 4 years old daughter see four itself is plural i mean you are talking about four as number and then you are saying years so you are making two things as plural never say like this always say i have a 4 year old daughter okay look at sentence 5 i would appreciate getting some advices from you never use advice in plural advice is a non countable noun just like homework information slang vocabulary extra so don't use advice as you can say uh, in plural so always say i would appreciate getting some advice from you the sixth sentence it talks about i'm really looking forward to go there remember whenever you write as or you uh, read i am really looking forward whenever there is this uh, you know a group of words looking forward then always use ing form of the verb that is i am looking forward to going there not just to go there okay now this seven number is a very different and very important variety of sentence in my country we are used to eat rice for breakfast now remember when you say we are used to eat rice that means it's your habit you don't do it right now but you know many people want to say that they are doing it right now that means it's a continuous process in their daily life and again they use this verb as we are used to eat so that's wrong remember there are two kinds of things one used to do and other used to doing so when you say used to doing that means you have done it i mean it is a habit and you are doing it on a daily basis but when you say i used to do it that means you did it in the past i used to smoke that means you did it in the past now you have left smoking but if you say i am used to smoking that means you have this habit currently also and that is why there is a difference between used to do and used to doing remember this this is a very important grammar point example number 8 i will give it to you when you will see each other or when i will give it to you when we will see each other so when you read the sentence remember you are using future tense tense two times don't use future tense two times it it, it is not uh, you know helpful i mean it is not making any sense also so how to use this sentence i will give it to you when we see each other so simple future tense has a combination with simple present tense so i will give it to you when we see each other now example number 9 is similar to 8 which means if you will go i will go to again if you go i will go to fine and number 10 sentence is a different kind of variety uh if you would have tried it you would have liked it now this is the kind of sentence in which you are using would have and past participle two times which looks very awkward in grammar so remember how to write this sentence if you had tried it you would have liked it so remember that this modal auxiliary would have and past participle it will go with past perfect tense right so these are the 10 types of varieties which i have talked about fine so here i have taken a lot of examples but i know not go individually with all the examples rather i will just pick up a few sentences just to make you understand what are the errors that we generally do so here 
first sentence the woman which works here is from japan so here that which is wrong when you are referring to a person always use who and not which right okay the other kind of sentence which i would like to pick up is i enjoyed from the movie now this is a wrong sentence you cannot say i enjoyed from the movie you should say i enjoyed the movie just put the object whatever the object is after the verb like enjoy okay another sentence like i look forward to meet you so same thing which i mentioned earlier i look forward to meeting you right okay uh, another sentence is i like very much ice cream you know ye bahut log bolte hai aisa i like very much ice cream इसको सही जगह पे आपको प्लेस करना है सिर्फ आई लाइक आइसक्रीम वेरी मच आप उसको सुनोगे तो यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड कि ये जो सेंटेंस है इट मेक्स मोर सेंस राधर देन द फर्स्ट वन आई लाइक वेरी मच आइसक्रीम उसका सेंस नहीं बनता है राइट ओके देन द अदर सेंटेंस इज आई लिव इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स रिमेम्बर इन बिफोर द नेम्स ऑफ सम ऑफ द कंट्रीज वी यूज द आर्टिकल द and that is why the answer is i live in the united states but bahut log isko galat bhi use karte hai jaise i i live in the gujarat so gujarat ke aage hum log the nahi lagate hain the same way uh, you can say the statue of unity so that's correct okay just like the statue of liberty right okay so these are a few more sentences which uh, just for your uh, information i'm uh, just uh, you know sharing right now so like we can take this sentence the police is coming right so the police itself is a plural uh, form of the subject and that's why don't use is use are as a verb right uh, another kind of sentence is do you like a glass of wine so do you like is not the kind of uh, you know offer that you are making but whenever you are making any offer always write would you like a glass of wine okay So that's the correct way of doing. Okay, now coming back to the certain errors which I want to just briefly talk about. So error number one, which majority of us uh, make, and that is in abbreviations. You know, in your uh, semester uh, two syllabus of English, you have the first chapter vocabulary. In that, you have uh, you must have learned this abbreviations. So abbreviations are those words which are the short forms. Okay, just like ISRO, so Indian Space Research Organization. so whenever you speak or write don't use abbreviations that is a wrong practice if you do that definitely you are going to create confusion in your writing okay people make uh, you know abbreviations of days of week week like sat for saturday mon for monday so remember that it doesn't make sense to people all the people in the world they don't know that m i n mon means monday and s a t sat means saturday right so remember to use the full uh, you know the words months of the year right the names of people people make the, you know short forms of that right then places and you know the names of places like massachusetts is the full name in the, in place of that people just use mass i want to mass so mass can create confusions or mass can create mess also right so here i think the whatsapp language is very much responsible don't use your whatsapp language anywhere in your writing the second error is a kind of error which means the error of pronouns do not mix the pronouns like for example here there is a sentence one cannot fail the exam unless you want to now read this sentence i mean listen to this sentence very properly one cannot fail the exam unless you want to now when you are using one cannot that means one as a pronoun do not use the other pronoun in your sentence as you okay so i am reading the sentence again one cannot fail the exam unless you want to this is wrong use the sentence correctly one cannot fail the exam unless they want to so this is the correct way of continuing the same pronoun you know third person pronoun second person pronoun don't change like this this is wrong if you have said third person continue with the third person pronoun okay the third error that we commit is lacking variety i'll just briefly tell you what is lacking variety you know uh, when you write a paragraph and when you have for example a name of a person let's say that your name of the person is smith so every time you use the word smith in the paragraph and almost i think let's say that you require the name five times and you have written five times smith 
so don't repeat the name again and again use the pronoun smith that means the pronoun is he or him or he's so replace your sentence uh, whenever you use the name as again and again which is uh, lacking called it is called lacking the variety that means you make the reading or you make the writing very boring sort of okay the next is shifts in the verb never ever mix the tenses you know sometimes we use simple present then we go to the past and then we go to the present continuous it is very wrong in fact you should use the same tense in all the sentences okay because if you are for example writing something as an event then just use the past tense don't use any other tense okay or past part perfect tense varieties of that you know what i mean to say is don't go from present to past and future and like that okay misusing the words very very important thing you know don't misuse the words like for example i will just uh, take here an, uh, one one variety of the words like accept and accept now accept that means to receive and accept that means to exclude something kuch kisi ko matlab chhod dena ya exclude something you just uh, you just don't accept it like that okay so always say that i was accepted you know by my friends i was accepted as it is by my friends okay but don't say that i was ex, uh, accepted by my friends that's wrong fine i was accepted accepted means you were received as you are you are received by your friends another pair of words that is affect and effect so remember people make mistakes in these kinds of words effect is basically about the influence and effect is about the result so you cannot say what are the effects of global warming you should say what are the effects of global warming so here i have so many words but i'll not be going uh, again into deep about all the words if you remember in the beginning i told you lie and lay the difference between the two words right so the same way these are also so many words which we need to uh, you know take care a very popular uh, you know pair of the words is then and then t h a n and t h e n always remember there is a difference between these two one is about the comparison the other is about t h e n that means later okay so coming back to the sixth very important common error that we make and that is redundancy repeating you know repetition of things like for example atm so atm the full form you know it is automated teller machine but you know all the people you will find out saying that atm machine it's very cash i mean it's very obvious also that you will hear this as many times as you know uh, possible but remember when you say atm machine what you are speaking automated teller machine machine so is there a logic to speak machine the, the word machine two times no so don't use the word which is already part of this uh, you know your acronym that is atm for example pin so personal identification number so don't say pin number you so said this is my pin that's it but you know we have not heard this and that is why we are hesitant to speak like that so personal identification number means pin don't say pin number okay so redundancy now the seventh type of error is called ending the sentence with preposition okay uh, unless and until you are required don't end the sentence with a preposition okay so look at this example that's the warrior i must talk to so this looks a little odd sentence but speak the sentence like this that's the warrior to whom i must talk now this is what uh, you know the correct way of speaking so anyways types of errors are many actually wrong word errors punctuation errors and even you can say the errors that are related to the usage okay so briefly i will just go through all these kinds of concepts like wrong word errors remember uh whenever you have wrong words that means you are supposed to check the spellings typographical mistakes which every time internet or let's say that your word it will not help you you need to practice it properly you know wrong meanings so use the dictionary very properly to find out what are the wrong meanings and commonly confused words which i have just told you what are the commonly confused words 
So I'll not, not go de into details of this. Punctuation marks are very important whenever to use comma. So for example, use a comma and a coordinating conjunction to join two independent clauses. Like here, there is a sentence. The game was over, but the crowd refused to leave. So you need to put a comma before but. That is the in the sentence. Okay. So remember where to put the comma to, uh, you know, uh, join two independent clauses. And the other use of comma is use commas after introductory phrases, clauses, or words that come before the main clause. Like, for example, while I was eating, the cat scratched at the door. So the cat scratched at the door is the main clause. And before that, you require a comma. And there is a, you know, this uh, other clause, or you can say the uh, dependent clause that is while I was eating, right? So the that, that, that use of punctuation mark of comma, it has so many uses that we need to, you know, learn. Then semicolons. Semicolons are also very important. Use the semicolon between two related independent clauses that are not joined by a conjunction. Conjunctions, you know, and, but, and all of that. So when you don't join two sentences with these conjunctions, you put a semicolon in between, right? Colons we use uh, to, you know, introduce a list of preceded by an independent clause, right? So just here, there is an example which we can see. Right? Apostrophe sir, marks. Yes, sir. There's a boy named Paras who has just asked uh, that, yes, sir, sir. Um, normally between snacks and snakes. Okay. There's, yes. There's a confusion. Uh, can you help me out to, to pronounce it correctly, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, see, snake and snacks. Uh, this is the, I, I would say rather, you know, um, uh, don't get offended, but people basically from Saurash region, they, uh, you know, they have the pronunciations uh, as, as, you know, the broad pronunciations of English, which they definitely need to practice. And I know many of my students in college who they were from Saurash, but then as they learned the pronunciation, they practice the pronunciations, they could come up with these kinds of, you know, solutions. So always remember when you say snack, you are talking about some food item. And when you say snake, that means you are talking about, you know, that uh, creepy insect. So remember that whenever you speak uh, English, you are not supposed to use broad pronunciations. You know, koi bhi pronunciation ya word ko aap log itna broad karke mat bolo. English is a language of contraction. That means it has to be spoken softly. It has to be spoken very, you know, uh, like like a very soft language. You know, uh, for example, you say you know, and you say you know. So there is a difference between these two expressions. Fine. So you say I am, and you say I'm. So there is a difference between these two kinds of things. You know, for example, if you uh, are working in a call center, and let me tell you that for eight hours on a call you are supposed to speak, and at that time you will get really tired. So what to do? You have to use these contracted forms of speaking. You know, so it's like it's and it is. So there is a difference between these two. So say it's right. So I think uh, you can overcome this uh, thing by practice. That's the only secret of that. Uh, and that, that's how it has to be done. Right? So any, any other interesting question we are getting? Fine. So uh, we have the, uh, I'll just uh, quickly go with the quotation marks. You know, the quotation marks are also very important in this sentence. And uh, always put the quotation mark uh, after putting your full stop or whatever is your expression in the sentence, right? But in academic writing, there are different ways of putting quotation marks, but that will not go into deep of uh, this kind of quotation marks right now. Now, usage errors. Remember, usage errors are related to, you can say, complete errors and incomplete. Uh, so you can say complete sentences and incomplete sentences, OK? So whenever you make a sentence, remember, it should have subject, predicate, and complete thought. And whenever you say that the sentence is not complete, that means it's just a small part or a fragment, which means it cannot stand alone. Like here, there, there are a few fragment examples. Since I went, I went fishing, 
So no sense of this sentence. You need to write something more into this. Okay. So don't write sentences like this. See, run-on sentences. Run-on sentences means long sentences. Do not be afraid of writing long sentences. One sentence can go ten lines also. There is no problem. You read the writers, classical writers in literature. They used to write so many lines, and still there is no full stop. It can happen. Remember, it can be grammatically right also by using comma, full stop, semicolon, colon, and things like that. Okay, fine. So run on example here. I have given an example. I'll read it for you. It is nearly half past five. We cannot reach town before dark. So just put a comma, and this is a run on sentence. Okay. Verb tense. Remember to use your verb tense very properly. Do not mix the tenses, as I told you earlier also. And memorize the verb forms very properly: transitive verbs, intransitive verbs, and like that. Okay. Here is an example of you know how tense can go wrong. So we viewed a Carib uh, Caribbean mystery and watched intently as John Hickson portrays Agatha Christie's Miss Marple. So here. You can say that the sentence starts with the past tense. We viewed, and then you present use of use present tense. So you say watch intently. So don't mix like this. You say we viewed. So you write this uh, verb in past tense that is watch, and not only just only watch. Okay. So the thing is don't mix the pronouns. Right. Okay. Now the next one is uh, you know how your uh, pronoun and antecedent agreement doesn't go. Like this sentence is an example. Everyone should make their own decisions. So when you say everyone, use his or her as the pronoun. Don't use their. Okay. So everyone should make their own decisions is a wrong sentence. Speak it as everyone should make his or her own decisions. Okay. Same way, each speaker maintained their voice. So don't speak like this. Say each speaker maintained his or her voice. subject verb agreement i think uh, already a lecture has been taken by one of uh, my colleagues and uh, subject verb agreement you have studied so i hope that in common errors of writing you will take care of subject verb agreement as well just i'll briefly take one sentence the box of ornaments belong in the attic remember this is a sentence in which you require s in the verb belong so because the subject is singular the box of ornaments belongs so you don't put belongs on the basis of ornaments but you put belongs on the basis of the box uh how to prevent now we are about to close so how to you know remove these errors that is very important so remember i'll give you a few tips like learn the rules okay see grammar is like a very uh, small bunch you know you 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 need to learn those uh, rules you need to memorize those rules and then you just use them again so remember to learn the rules perfectly first of all okay you know that you know wearing a mask is a rule so you should follow the rules that's it so learn the grammar rules very properly plan ahead you know give yourself enough of time when you are you know writing or when you are you know reading or things like that know your writing weaknesses so you you must remember what are the things that you know keep you as hindrance so you should work on them read aloud this is a very important practice you know it's my own experience if you read aloud definitely you are going to you know uh, or, i mean you are going to remove a lot of of your own mistakes of your pronunciations of your reading and even of your writing as well because you know it it may you really like that you are going wrong. and always don't be afraid to commit mistakes it's human you know finally what are the tips that you should uh, you know get from this lecture so correct you okay the other the thing is be analytical and focused when you are speaking or reading it is very important you know uh, because you know majority of the people they do not they are not focused when they are reading or listening and that is where they are supposed to go wrong the third thing is do something difficult you know out of your comfort zone like many 
पीपल से दैट मुझे ग्रामर नहीं आता है ये है वो है just read kal you know don't read those kinds of regular books but read some good writers it will help english repetition is the key to everything i think okay because if you repeat whatever you have learned you are going to be a master of that record yourself you know technology is so powerful and you are students of technology so use the technology to record yourself and then listen to yourself again listen to podcast i think i i don't need to say pod, about podcast because nowadays people are so much you know uh, rather i should say that they are uh, in tune with this kind of technology that podcasts are so famous and you should listen to them right stay focused on your goals and make a list of new words every day you know learn the new words and that can help you increase your vocabulary and correct yourself and understand the process after all you should understand that if you will keep on going definitely the process will give you some or the other results so uh, thank you very much uh, dear students dear organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to deliver this session and uh, i wish that if there were any queries uh, then uh, by this time i think i would get them so thank you very much everyone and if there are any queries i would definitely like to address thank you sir definitely it was a wonderful session you almost covered everything that we actually discussed uh, that you will be covering into the session for the students um, who are watching this and who would be watching this because uh, there are a couple of students who are having their regular lectures so they normally watch it at the laser time and that is why we have created this uh, uh, google meet and then through google meet we are going it live and storing it as a reserve so that not only my student any student of any college can just log in or can just subscribe even if you don't subscribe you can go through good lectures that are on the topic that are required for any human who wants his or her english to improve to a bit these topics are not pertaining to any syllabus they are pertaining they are in fact you know designed in such a way that it are, they are in general they are general topics general topics for anyone who wants to upgrade english who wants to try his hands who is a layman to english who wants to go for competitive examination who wants to know different aspects and how he can improve english so our syllabus is designed in such a way itself that it covers basic things rather than you know teaching you in a specific area and in then then you making you expertise into a particular terminology only see the uh, design of the syllabus you will easily come to know my dear students that it is designed for for your day to day tasks of english so that you know you you are well converse you like uh, to uh, whatever comes or pops up into your mind you are able to con communicate you are able to uh, have a good conversation that keeping these things in mind the uh, designing of the syllabus has been done so thanks a lot for covering this topic sir uh, on behalf of gc i thank you and uh, we hope that in future times when we need you you'll always be there mera haq hai aap pe definitely sir main mere haq se bulata hu but i really love when a student raises his level to uh, uh, an expert level uh, it is just you know a return gift to a teacher so when i said this to ma'am that uh, you are going to come today she was so excited uh, that yes you know this is this is the achievement this is in fact you know uh, the achievement that we have achieved to have uh, such a nice my, student who my who my pleasure to... my pleasure and happiness sir <laughs> ma'am closing remarks from you yes sir thank you so much sir dipak pat sir and uh, the examples that you picked up were really uh, very interesting and uh, it seems that you have taken a lots of uh, 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 hard work to uh, uh, put the exact examples before our students 
uh, uh, when you were discussing the uh, lay down and lie down, I didn't interrupt you at that time. But as a teacher, one thing comes in my mind that many times people uh, commit that error uh, because they are comparing uh, that lie down lie as the immediately that comes in our mind that lie is the opposite of truth so truth and lie so people when they uh, use the word or they read or they listen to the word lie down they generally will prefer and go to the lay down rather than the lie down so this phrasal verbs or even the uh, similarity to the pronunciation that is also uh, uh, making one ground to for the people to commit this kinds of errors and that that at least comes in my mind as a teacher yes yes absolutely i agree i agree with you ma'am yes uh, uh, and uh, a very very interesting session it was for me also so, uh, sir and uh, thank you very much for the same for sparing your time and for uh, putting down for pouring your energy also in in this session thanks thank a lot you, thank you Sir, your uh, mic is, I think, not on. Thank you, sir. We will yeah. again have you back into GC Bhavnagar. Hope this pandemic goes Thank and you. we can have you here in person. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, have sir. a nice day to Thank all you. of you. Thank you. We'll call it a day. Same Thank to you, you, sir. Same to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye.